All right, so let's get right into uh, today's topic. And today I want to deal with watch that you don't get deceived. Watch that you don't get deceived. Luke 21 verse 8 states the following, and he said, Take heed that you do not be deceived. For many will come in my name, saying, I, I am he. And the time is drawn near. Therefore, do not go after them. The Bible is very clear that we need to watch for this issue of deception. Now, I want to just take you very quickly through how Satan works with regards to deception. All right. The Bible says that Adam and Eve, all right, Eve was deceived by the devil. Then you see the nations are going to be deceived by the, by the devil. And the Bible says that they're going to be deceived and they're going to come after Jerusalem and in battle of Armageddon, Jesus Christ sorts them out. But I want to show you something that's really important. In the millennium, the thousand years of peace, Satan is loosed for a very short time. What is the very first thing that Satan does? He goes and deceives the nations again. And then he makes them all attack Jerusalem again. And so I want you to understand that Satan's plan, picture, methodology is to deceive the nations. Here's the problem with deception. Deception brings you to the place that you think that you are actually doing the correct thing. You actually honestly believe that you are doing something correct. And you don't realize that you are believing a lie. And so this morning I want us to really ask God to keep us from deception. And what's interesting is the Bible says that when we see who Satan is, we're actually going to make this comment. Are you the one that deceived the nations? So Satan's strategy and plan is to bring deception. Now I've seen it many times. We people get deceived to the point that they actually believe that they are doing the right thing. And how do I know that I'm not deceived? How do I know that I'm in line? Two things, and check that you have this. Number one is you always line up with the Word of God. What does the Bible say about your action or deed or what you're trying to do? Number two, make sure that you've got some spiritual people around you to talk into your life so that they can show you if you're going off track on anything. That they can direct you and bring you back online. Every one of us need this kind of protection. All right. Make sure that you don't get yourself deceived. It will cause devastation for you. It will cause devastation for your family. And we don't want that in Jesus name. We want you to be blessed. We want you to have an amazing journey. Amazing life with the Lord Jesus Christ but not to be deceived and not to let Satan come and get his way. Amen. And so this morning when we come around the table, we're going to ask God to help us so that we don't get deceived and to make sure that our checks and balances are in place. On the night that Jesus betrayed, he took bread and broke it. He said, this is my body that was broken for you. Take it in remembrance of me. He took the cup. He said, this is my blood that was shed for you. Take in remembrance of me. The body of Christ was broken for your physical and emotional healing. The blood of Christ was shed for your salvation, protection, and provision. And so this morning when we come around the table, let us ask God to bring us into the fullness of what he has for us. And that he will protect us from deception. In Jesus' mighty name. Lord, we come before you right now. We ask you please to forgive us of any wrongdoing, any wrong thought, any wrong action, any wrong motive. God, I ask you please to forgive us and to wash us white as snow. But Lord, right now in Jesus' name, I ask you, Lord, to help us not to be deceived in Jesus' name. Lord, I ask you to help us and show us who we can trust, who we can put into our inner circle to help us stay on the line. Lord, I thank you that we are not going to fall for the devil's tactics or the devil's plans. In Jesus' mighty name, 
And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Lord, I pray right now that as we take of your elements, Holy Spirit, that you will lead us, guide us, and prompt us. Lord, when we start going into error, that you will immediately start prompting us in Jesus' name. We thank you for the covenant this morning. And we pray a blessing over each and every one in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's partake together. Lord, I pray right now for a physical healing. I command every form of sickness to leave our bodies in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, that we are healed by the power of God. Lord, I release the dunamis power of God into our bodies and I command every symptom to go. I thank you, Lord, that we are healed and we walk in divine health and we walk in divine healing. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Well, folks, I'm so excited for this morning. I want to tell you what, it's a beautiful Saturday morning and I love the Lord Jesus Christ. I trust that you are ready for a wonderful day today and that you know that Jesus Christ is alive and whatever you do, you are going to do with the blessing of the Lord in Jesus' name. And so I want to tell you, I love the Lord. I worship Him. I honor Him. And I'll tell you what, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And so let's pray together because I'm going to pray over families. I'm going to pray blessing and peace and rest. I'm trusting God that these weekends become a weekend of rest. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you right now for your blessing over the families. Lord, I pray right now that every single family will be blessed in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for supernatural rest. Lord, that we will use these weekends to rest and unwind and enjoy ourselves in Jesus' name. Father, I pray your blessing and anointing. And Lord, I pray that you're going to do something supernatural. For each and every one this week. In Jesus name. Lord I speak destiny and blessing over. Each and every person. In Jesus mighty name. And everybody said. Amen and amen. Well folks I want to tell you. I want to ask that you have a wonderful restful weekend. Try and take some time out. You know last weekend we were in Durban. And uh, the rugby was on. And the Bulls were playing Stormers. Man, I saw many people that were very unpeaceful. All right. The rest was not around. All right. So don't get yourself worked up over sport or something else. Man, I'll tell you what. Let's believe God that we can rest and fulfill what God has called us to do. And remember this. Wherever we go, we do what God has called us. We are going to walk our neighborhoods. We are going to release peace over our suburbs. We are going to pray 10 minutes a day in the spirit for KwaZulu-Natal. Because we want to see the breakthrough in this nation. Amen. And so I am trusting God for the sleeping giant of church to wake up in this nation. Amen. So I want to let you know it's Saturday. So tonight, 7 o'clock, we've got a guest speaker. So please get ready. And I want you to be blessed in everything that you do. So let's get to our declaration. I want to remind you, when we do the declaration, we do this in faith. Every statement is true. I'm getting countless testimonies of people coming with testimonies where rules and policies have been changed. Things have been brought in line so that they can get a blessing. The same can happen to you and I if we stand in faith with each statement. So let's go. In Jesus name, I declare by faith that I walk in divine favor. I have preferential treatment, supernatural increase, restoration. Increased assets, great victories, recognition, prominence, petitions granted, policies and rules changed, battles won that I did not have to fight, all because of the blessing and the favor of God in my life. So saints, I want to bless you this morning. I want to say, go out with might, go out with valor, release peace, and remember most of all, speak peace over your family in Jesus' name.